that alone, but the Phyllis Wheatley Conference is a festival, I guess not a conference, it's a festival, is so important because Miss Wheatley, like a lot of us in, at the beginning of our career, Miss Wheatley was, was accused of not doing her own work, you know, that how could a, a Black woman write poetry this beautiful and, and this, uh, this important? And they actually, you know, had her sit down. They, they were, they being the so-called uh, white intellectuals, you know, now how did you get to this line and how did you get to that line? And of course, Ms. Wheatley held, held her own and, and rightfully, and rightfully so. And I'm so pleased that uh, this festival has continued. 50 years is a long time. And um, I'm really just pleased that uh, we're continuing this. And by the way, and then I'll let you talk, but uh, the last time I was in Jackson, you had the Toni Morrison bench. And I have a, a, a photograph of myself that I just love so much of me sitting on the on on the on the uh, bench on the Toni Morrison bench there at Jackson State, and I just think that you know the 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 things that that uh, Jackson has done. I'm I'm sorry about the water, and I hope that we've gotten that straightened out. But I think the things that we've done to go forward, I think this is important, and I think the people of Jackson, Mississippi, need to be proud of themselves, of their state, and of uh, of the people that, that they have created. I think that it's very, I think that you should not be down on yourself because you're a Mississippian, because it's a wonderful, the creativity coming out is great. And that's, I said that badly, but it's nonetheless true. The creativity coming from Mississippi is great. And I didn't mention, I should have Alice Walker, speaking of walkers. And uh, Alice lived, you know, right around the corner from uh, from Margaret. And so that was just, uh, that was just great, you know, to be right there with all of this history and you, you think my goodness look at i mean you talk about feeling great and um being in jackson state recently well recently i think it's been two or three years i've had some health issues as you probably uh are aware of but being being in in uh in jackson state was just wonderful because you're just surrounded by a lot of history and a lot of spirit of people who say no we're we are, ain't, ain't gonna let nobody that the old spiritual ain't gonna let nobody turn me around <laughs> But it's nice to see the youngsters coming up. And for me, it's really nice to see the um, uh, novelists coming up because the novelists are telling us, poets tell, um, we tell a lot. We, we, I think we help people see things, but the novelists tell the story. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we said, if, if somebody asked, well, what's the, what's the Black Library? Well, the Black Library was the people in the forest going out into the woods after a day's work singing spirituals they were putting the story together the writers wrote it whether it was Richard Wright and I'm not fighting about another Mississippian because some people like him some people don't but Richard Wright uh uh what's his name uh, uh Ellison you know you have you have them telling a story but the poets took that story that that story they were telling and we made a song out of it and making that song, we were able to teach our people that we are a great people. Did I say that badly? No, it's beautiful. I, I, I think it's so wonderful. So I was recently at a library uh, association and we were talking about what 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 are the first great libraries? The first library was, was the black people singing in the forest. That's, that was the first library in America. Now, and I'm not picking on white people, but now, 
books came along and people, white people had money, they could build buildings, but we couldn't build buildings. We could only remember what we, what we wanted our children to know through song. And that became our library. And our libraries continued. That's why people continue to burn books. But if you burn books, it doesn't matter because you cannot burn a song. The song will live. And that that that's what we've shown. I just think about the gathering. I, I don't, I'm going to use bad language again. But one of the things, if you get a bunch of particularly Black women, and that's going to be Phyllis Wheatley on up or down, whichever way you look at it, the one thing we're going to talk about is food. And so <laughs> we all cook. And by the way, Margaret Walker was a, uh, as you know, was an excellent cook. Mar Margaret could cook. And as much as we loved her, and we all did, Gwendolyn Brooks couldn't cook. So when Gwen would invite you to her home and say things like, you know, oh, I'll cook, I'll, have, I'll make dinner for you, everybody would go like, oh, no, not Gwen cook, because she couldn't cook. But Margaret, <laughs> for Margaret, it was worth coming down to Mississippi for, because Margaret could cook. And Margaret and I cooked together. And that was just always, always a pleasure. It, it was always a pleasure to come down. She, she was great. And I think that that's one thing we do. And when I, um, when I think about space, when I think about the galaxy, I'm always saying that the group that we've got to get into the galaxy are black women. And people say, why? And I say, because we're the only people that get along with everybody. And as we go up to Mars, there, there's a documentary on me called uh, Going to Mars, the Nikki Giovanni Project. But as we go to Mars and as we as we meet Martians, the fir first thing black women are going to say is, are you hungry, baby? Have you eaten? Because that's what we <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> and a poem does the same thing, or a song does the same thing. If you get a, a bunch of black women together, you're gonna hear the humming because they hum. And somebody says, my grandmother used to do that song because we all, I'm back to my library. We know each other's songs. We know what our grandmothers and our great grandmothers taught us. I think it's fabulous. So you're saying, well, what, 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 do, what do we teach? I don't know what we teach because I don't know it's our job to teach. I think it's our job to be loving and to be patient and to listen. And I think that that's what people like me try to do. I'm not trying to teach anybody anything. I'm just trying to be me and to let them know that for whatever it means, I got your back. If you're tired, I got your back. Come and see. You know, I, I don't I don't want to think about and, and I don't uh, what I'm leaving behind because uh, I just want to keep going forward. And that, that that's really it's not a good answer, but uh, I'm not egomaniacal. So I don't have <laughs> I'm not I don't have that uh, problem of, you know, well, what are they going to think about me? Because I don't care what they think about me. And um, <laughs> and I I would advise all the young writers out there not to care what they think about you, because all of the really good writers that I'm aware of, nobody knew that they were really good, you know, for 100 years. You, mm. You've been dead. So you may as well continue to live <laughs> and enjoy it and be and be pleased with your work to know that you have done the best that you can do, because that's all you can do. And, and at any given point, somebody uh, has said, well, I've been asked this, and we all do a lot, you know, well, what do you, what would you tell your, you know, 30 year old self? Well, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but I know that whatever I did at 30 was the best I can do, like whatever I'm doing at 80. And I can't let what I did at 30 affect me because there's going to be contradictions. 
If you never make a contradiction, you haven't grown. Mm. Uh, the other word for that would be you're stupid. You have to have contradictions because as you learn things, you realize, oh, I could have done better. I, I could have done it differently. And that's all you can do. So I appreciate um, anybody, you know, that, that that's reading my work and, and I'm glad and all all they will, all anybody will ever be able to say that I know is that well I know she did her best and that's it I I, I really have done my best I am doing my best.